Oh, great to see you, Micah, there. Great to see Dagmawi and Ken, Arun. Yes. Um, please remind others to kind of join in. You can just send uh, a message to a person, you know, that who's not joined in yet. All right. I think we just get started as we wait for others to kind of... Um, join us today i hope today my voice is better than the last time because um last time everybody was worried that i was feeling a bit bad but i feel like my voice is a little bit clear today yes michael great if you can hear me we'll just dive straight into it i'm sorry i'll keep my video off um well, in, intentionally, because I kind of bumped into something. So my face looks a little bit interesting and I don't want to keep that in the recording. So for now, I just keep my video off and we'll, we'll just, um, as we usually do the daily standups, I'll be expecting you guys to, um, to know the drill by now. So for those who are ready to go, you just want to understand a little bit about your yesterday what did you work on what were the blockers and particularly also for the uh, uh female trainees yesterday we had a chance to uh have a female only guest speaker uh who was taking us through a q a on llp it would be nice to hear any key takeaways from that session as well so anyone who's willing to go first Martin. Okay, Martin, okay. if you can hear me, just unmute and go straight in. All right, uh, thank you for that. Uh, so yesterday uh, I was trying to uh, do uh, the, just com com combining the back end and the front end. And uh, I really felt useless to some extent because uh, the, I really, felt that I had understood how this entire framework, uh, like how it works all together. Uh, but unfortunately, there are still some gaps that I had. And so I had to go and restudy. I had to go and restudy this uh, thing again. Uh, and that took quite some time because uh, it, it ate a lot into my hours. Uh, I, going back to restudy, to look at how this thing uh, really works. That is the the, the technology, that, like the, the 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 theoretical concepts I I had understood, like how the the blockchains, blah blah blah, all those things how they work. But the working, the you know, the, the working now, the programming bit of it, it was quite, uh, yeah, it was it was uh, it was something that. It, it, it was taking a bit of time to digest it. So I had to like sit down and really go and restudy that thing. So it took me like the whole of yesterday. I just basically understanding. Uh, and, and, and yeah, I felt like, I don't know whether it really consumed much of my time, but today I'm feeling like I've understood it a bit better. And uh, I want to, because I started re-engineering the backend yeah, and so um, today I want to compete fully on the back end and combine the front end at the same time, and then I'll uh, we can see how far it goes. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for sharing that, Martin. And it's good that you kind of share your experience, as Arun has mentioned. And sometimes you realize you you think that you've understood everything, and you realize you've not once you get onto the job itself and it's a good lesson and sometimes uh, you're right it can be time wasting especially when you try to dive into something and without a clear understanding about it so that's uh thank you for sharing that so if, to everybody let's learn to sharpen our knives first before getting to cut okay so who's going next and that's ken ken if you can hear me just unmute and dive straight through it Okay, thank you. So yesterday, it was more of getting the sandbox to work on my machine. It took me some time, but I managed it. 
also i was not able to view my transaction on the app flow it took me some time before i could figure out that i was supposed to start sandbox in release so but i managed i also work i came up with the repo structure now today i want to work on the front end and back back end just using static data without connecting it to the <coughs> algorand sandbox also i'll be downloading ubuntu to install later on just in case my windows misbehaves so can before you go i'm just a little bit curious about uh, what why do you think was it was getting you it was taking you a lot more time uh, to get things done what were the challenges the major challenge is that if you get into a problem there are no not so many resources online you can just google and get a solution so it's like you have to figure out most, most of the stuff on your own and uh, did you only figure out on your own or did you also you know capitalize on the community did you reach out to anybody actually the solution was posted on slack and yeah the solution of the problem i was having it was posted by henok on slack perfect thank you so much for sharing that and i hope you're geared for today and now we i can see two more hands here um uh, michael you have your hand up please unmute and go straight into it and the females i would also want to see some hand up from the female community here michael okay good morning everyone good morning hello yeah uh, yesterday i was i was the kind of happy and also i was stuck yeah i was the sandbox was not working for me for the last two days monday and tuesday it was not working i was trying everything that i can i was trying to see some documentation and i was not able but yesterday thanks to Tade, Brook and gazai i was able to uh, i was able to make the sandbox work but after that when i tried some transaction and try to see it on the the app flow i was not able to do that too so i just decided that I, 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 I don't have to spend another time trying to see some, some problems and then I, I, I uh, decided to download the Ubuntu and try to work on it. Unfortunately, my, my computer was uh, not functioning well and yesterday I was, it was a full of blocker yesterday so I didn't do the reporting well and also the guitar was not good. Hopefully, I just uh, after now I will the Ubuntu. I have downloaded it, and I will I will try to work on it, and hopefully I will get on track. Yeah, that's all. Thank you. Yeah, again, Michael. In, in terms of like said yesterday was full of blockers. Before you got the sandbox to work, what what were what where were you falling short? What was? Where were you falling short to getting things done yesterday? So you say that uh, you got assistance from one of your fellow trainees. So yeah. where were you falling short? It was not working. I didn't get you. What do you mean by falling short? Okay, so why was it not working for you? Is it because probably you didn't know something? Or is it because you were doing something wrongly? What mm -hmm. was the... <laughs> I don't know, maybe it was about the catchy and uh, just after cleaning it, it worked for me. Okay. And are you feeling confident for today in getting things done? Uh, hopefully. Yeah. I'm hopefully. kind of, yeah. All right. Great to know that. Yididia, you have your hand up. Okay. Hello, Mary. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Uh, good morning. So uh, yesterday wasn't bad. Uh, I was also struggling trying to understand the flow of the app. Uh, I can also see that I can see the general picture, but 
uh, the problem comes when it comes to the implementation phase. Uh, I have submitted my assignments on yesterday. I can't say it's job well done, but uh, I've tried to submit what I have. Uh, I, I still have some confusions regarding the implementation and the flow of uh, the challenge. And I, I feel like I'm doing some of the implementations really the wrong way and uh, wanted to clear the confusion. So I have, I, I have some questions to ask regarding the challenge. First, especially on the admin side, it, it, the certificates that are going to be generated going to be generic or are they going to be unique for each trainee? And does each trainee use their public key when obtaining a certificate or do they provide additional information for the admin side? All right, I can see Musa and Anastasia are here. I can answer that question. Uh, oh, yeah, but both. Okay. Thanks, May. Um, no, really good question, Didia. So it is definitely going to be unique uh, mm -hmm. for one reason that it would have its own ID from our side. So we have to mint it every time. And so the reason that why one person would obtain, uh, mostly you know, if you have read the documentation, it's usually to allow some variables to be stored in your space, right? Mm -hmm. So because uh, we are kind of there are global variables and then local variables. Mm. And when you opt in, you basically are saying like, okay, you know, for the the stateless vari uh, stateless contract, if you are in the future, like if you are implementing in that side, then you need to save some of those uh, local variables. So that's mm. that's the only reason. And so, I mean, I'm not sure if, if that address, but it definitely will be general, like kind of unique to that person. And it will be started as frozen. Uh, so oh. that they don't change it uh, because and then smart contracts would be attached uh, in in the different fields because the an nft would have four fields that you would associate to so some kind of um, address and mm -hmm. so the smart contracts would have been associated to it so that's that's the kind of the flow so you 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 can but if you can implement it for one person then it's fine. Even if you assume it is generic, it's the the point is that when you opt in, the the variables would have to change, right, for you, mm. because it's not transfer, right? It's because like NFT is just a very unique thing, and mm. you either transfer the owner and the manager uh, to something, you know, to someone or to another one. Like so, for example, if Ten Academy owns it, we can be managers to those NFTs, okay. but you can be the owner. But what that means is that you still really we can still change it that means and if we delete actually the manager and the you know the other elements then forever it will be yours nobody can change it right and mm -hmm. and also if we throw froze it and give you what that really implies is that you cannot transfer it but you can only use it to authenticate basically so mm -hmm. because you cannot sell it um, and and certificates are unsellable right it's like you can't transfer it to people and whether we will be the managers of those certificates, we have to decide, but it doesn't matter. Like that basically means ultimately, will we delete the manager field or not? Okay. Uh, so the thing that makes that certificate unique to each training will be the public address or some other property in the metadata? So it's in the metadata, it's a hash of something, right? Okay, so the admin will have all the data of the trainees before the trainees opt in for a certificate? Yes. And you will meet all of the certificates before the trainees opt in? Absolutely, yeah. So it's basically, so, it's the same as what we would issue normally, but this would be an NFT issue. You know, we would know your name, who completed it, and who would be qualified for, you know, even if you opt in, we might decline if yes. you haven't finished. Okay, so when, when, when a trainee opts in, uh, in addition to his public address, his name will also be passed to the admin so that the admin can decline or accept his request, right? It's most likely will be like that, yeah. So I think, you know, you the further, like the design of, we have to, to still sing uh, what kind of data we would be, but absolutely it would be, a, it has to be distinguished because from the public key, mm. we cannot distinguish who that person yes. is. So exactly, mm. so there should be a variable that would state either an ID um what is kind of like the you know the google class id whatever but it most likely would be email and name. okay 
So okay. we'll try to save data. So it would be probably the name, the email that's registered with us. Okay. So then one last question. Yeah. Uh, will we be storing that data on chain or will you be using some other database to have all the list on track for so that? The actual, the actual data, I think it would be stored in the distributed file system. Oh, all the list of the trainees as well as their Sorry, yeah, so only key variables would be stored on chain. Mm. Mm. But the data of the trainees will be stored on the IPFS or some distributed file exactly. system. Yeah, so okay. it, the, especially the certificate, whatever we call the certificate, it's most like an image, right? Mm. That's that one will be stored in, in, IFNS, uh, in IFNS. Yes, but when you train your team, the admin should should see a list of trainees that are opting in for a particular certificate right and and the variable of the name should be in the actually should be in the local in the on chain uh, uh, okay uh, i didn't get that part but uh, how will the admin see the list of trainees that are opting in when the train isn't even connected to the blockchain so i mean they have to connect i mean without it's opt-in is you you must have an account Yes, they will have an account, but when they opt in, the admin should see the list of trainees that are opting in on his dashboard, right? Yes. So that list should come from a database or will it be stored on a database or? Most likely, will... yeah, it's, it should be in the backend database. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, okay. Just want to make sure. Yeah. No, I mean, it's the list. I mean, the, so all of the web part, kind of how you display is not going to be associated there, right? It's just only whatever, when you query from the list from the public address and when you want to get the data of what is stored in the blockchain, that's only the one that you will store in, in the blockchain. But every other thing that facilitates mm -hmm. communication, it's actually, it's stored in a database, like uh, in the bucket or some dynamic thing in the front end. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Sorry, just before we stop, because I think this is an interesting question. I just wanted to give my understanding of it and maybe the other will tell me how I'm wrong. I thought it was pretty straightforward. Each person has, this is this idea of the wallet, which is their own personal address. And it's nothing more, nothing less than somebody submits their wallet address. And we simply say, yes, that wallet has one certificate from us. Uh, no, I think that's, that's the simplest version, but when we want to store something yeah. in their database in their account because they get charged for it right for a variable so they need to opt in so that's the uh, opt-in is the more than just giving sending me um the public address yeah. to actually make a transaction so it's just one step when you are because of algorithm implementation that you we will basically have to store some data in their space and for that they need to opt in and so it's a slightly it's an opt-in is a transaction let's call it it's a what transaction it's a transaction it's a form of transaction okay i All right, don't thank fully you, understand okay I, I hope that was clear for you, DJ. And yeah, Bob, just before you go, there was a follow-up question from Geza on the chat box. I don't okay. know if you ha you're able to tackle that one regarding the properties of NFT. Yeah, Bob. Yeah, so I, I just question? muted because it was yeah, and I, I I saw it. So mm. uh, maybe Geza, what what do you mean, like so? The meta, so the NFT will have a field called the metadata, and that would be a link, most likely to the distributed file system. So, if we were to store it on chain, that would be just the basically the the hash. Otherwise, it would be the link. Anything else you wanted to? Is it, is that does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you, Ababel. Um, anyone else willing to go next? Okay. I will just go on and kind of call upon any of the names. Abel? 
हेलो हेलो हाय अबो हेलो गो हेड and i was working on the project inside the interface study and was able to handle it uh, i'm now working on the back end and the smartphone connection solidity and its implementation which i believe is a difficult component and i'm hopeful that it will it will work and that's what i have all right sorry I, I i was struggling to hear you a little bit but did you have any blockers do you have any blockers as of yesterday that probably people can be able to assist you at this moment can you hear me now yes loud and clear okay i was working on the project's client side interface yesterday and was able to handle it I'm now working on the backend and the smart contract connection and its implementation, which I believe is a difficult component. And I'm hopeful that it will work. That's what I was saying. I see, I see. So basically no blockers on your end. That's good to know. N not yet, yet, but yeah. Not yet. That's cool. All right, I can see Dagmawi has her mic on already. Dagmawi, do you want to go straight ahead? Are you able to hear me okay, Dagmawi? Hello. Hello. Okay, uh, so speaking about my progress, uh, I was able to submit the tasks, the, the interim submission on, I guess on time, I was a little bit late uh, due to my, uh, due to changing my operating system to Linux to Ubuntu. So, uh, but I think uh, I'll, I'll be on track and keep working on the project later on. And uh, that's it, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I'm kind of wondering um, where our female trainees are. So Stella, if you can hear me okay, um, do you want to just unmute? Also, if I also just ask like, uh, you know, so that it can, another question. I think people may feel that they don't understand something and, and that maybe they don't want to ask that. I think you should know that this is not you know, if someone understands, great, you know, awesome. But it's expected if you're really confused, it's also okay. So you just have to try to articulate your confusion, even if you don't have a starting place where, you know, how to even what kind of question you want to ask. But just as soon as you start talking, it gets easier. Like even other people would help you. Okay, do you mean that? Do you mean that? Right. So in a way, I really encourage people who really even confused, who lost, who doesn't even understand the purpose of the whole project or the purpose of blockchain or anything you should just start asking instead of okay feeling okay no there's no way like you know i don't even understand what they're talking about or something if that is the case you know don't feel you know don't hold it just you know actually let it out thank you thank you yeah uh and and, and yes some are setting back feeling like um, you know by iterating where com you have confusion it makes you um less better or less competent no that's not it it's an opportunity for you to get assistance Maron, i can see your hand up if you can hear me okay just unmute and go straight ahead if you're speaking you're still on mute Maron. hello good morning everyone good morning how are you i'm good you can now hear so uh just to update everyone, I have I was able to submit uh, the interim submission. Uh, I am feeling a bit behind though because I have been trying to set up my my operating system to Linux, and I'm currently doing that. After that, after that, I have to set up my PC, my whole computer, and hopefully I'll get back in track. 
by today and just continue on working on the front end and creating the smart cards. So that's uh, that's it for the progress so far with me. Thank you. Awesome. Any particular confusions, any particular assistance that you might need at this moment in time to get you uh, to make currently, sure back? Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm asking some of my friends on the Slack, so uh, some others are, you know, going to the same process as I'm communicating with them, so there are no other specific problems I have. If I do, I'll be sure to share them on the Slack. Great, and hope you're feeling um, confident for today as well. All right, so I will go straight to Nardis. Nardis, are you able to hear me? Oh, she, uh, I think she dropped off. She dropped off. Sol Salam, are you there? Hello. Hello, how are you doing? How are you? I'm good. Uh, I will yesterday. Um, uh, I had a little bit of progress compared to uh, uh, the Monday and uh, Tuesday. And the reason was I wasn't uh, able to uh, uh, make my sandbox work. So uh, after trying many approaches, I um, installed Ubuntu. I switched my operating system to Ubuntu entirely and it worked fine and uh, I was able to do the transaction um, and uh, the, see the changes on the DAP flow and things like that. So I was somewhat happy about that. And uh, But I wasn't able to complete uh, some things like uh, PyTail and PyTest because of the short uh, time I had uh, in regards to configuring the sandbox, but I finally um, started working on that right now, and that's my progress so far. Are you feeling confident in terms of your progress at the moment and in terms of today? Uh, I wouldn't say I'm feeling confident, but uh, um, I'm on the way. I'm, I'm on the way. I'm trying to understand many concepts uh, in here. Um, trying to uh, make sense out of it all and how I'm going to integrate the affronting backing uh, with uh, this uh, uh, algorithm. So I'm trying to figure that out, uh, but I hope I'll uh, reach there. And maybe out of curiosity, you're saying you go, you, you're trying to understand some concepts. How are you doing that? Well, uh, I'm doing that like by researching, by uh, going through the documentation and uh, also other helpful tutorials uh, on YouTube and things like that. And also asking uh, my peers. Awesome. Yes, please keep, um, keep up with the getting into the, your uh, tapping into the resource within your community as well. Titus, I can see your hand up. Do you want to unmute and? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, are you able to hear me? Loud and clear. Okay, so um, about my progress, uh, yesterday I was able to make complete. I wasn't able to visualize or maybe interact with the sandbox in time. So I didn't do the visual, the, the, the D app. I didn't uh, submit the screenshots uh, about how I interacted with the sandbox. Uh, so yesterday I was getting my environments right because as I had earlier said, um, I had to switch my, I had to switch into Ubuntu operating system. Uh, Titus? In the environment, right? Installing all the, the necessary. At first, it. Sorry, Titus, but, we're um, losing you. Okay. Are you able to hear me? Yeah, you're breaking. Then when you come back, you come back strong. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, 
Yeah, so basically I set up my environment, my... Interact with the sandbox, uh, it was already past uh, the deadline. So um, today I'll be more into diving into how basically everything works. And um, just a question, because I'm just getting to interact with the, this, the sandbox uh, repo right now, um, uh, we are supposed to box instruction uh, uh, the the docker daemon is supposed to be running on the in the background so um i haven't really worked on uh with uh, after i clone um am i like supposed to have already started the doc i don't know like i haven't How am I supposed to go about it? I have I have everything set. I have my VS code. I have my Docker desktop installed. Like I have everything. My VS code. Everything is in place. So, and the cloning, or maybe to have the Docker. All right, Titus. Yeah. Okay. I think Musa Musa gets the question. Musa, do you want to go ahead? Docker must be running before you run a uh, sandbox app. So you need to, I don't know, like maybe uh, if, if it doesn't, normally it would start automatically, but if, if it doesn't, if you haven't set that up, uh, you need to start it up. Do, do we hear Musa? Can you hear me? I, I can't hear you. Uh, I think Musa just. Can you hear me now? Join. Uh, okay. Yeah, we can hear you better now. I had to rejoin. I don't know what was up. So I'm, I was saying that um, your Docker needs to be running uh, because um, Sandbox uses Docker. So it won't be able to use Docker if your Docker is not running. Uh, so I think the command is service Docker start or something like that. Uh, you can look it up. Sure. Okay, just a question, Musa. Um, uh, do I like uh, do I run the Docker start in my VS Code terminal or? What What are you using to run Docker? I I have the Docker desk desktop installed. Yeah, just have your uh, Docker uh, desktop running. Oh, okay, just so if, okay. If, you that, if you have that running, then it should be fine. Yeah. Okay, so Docker should be running just... through. Uh huh. Oh, uh, it it uh, my VS code will get to like uh, it will just sync automatically if I have my Docker I, uh, already running. It it should uh, because that would be running throughout the system on your Docker des desktop, so it should be able to pick it up. Are you oh. are you are you running the command from your your terminal for your VS code? Uh from my VS code, like I have everything in my VS code. Uh, or, yeah. I, I, are you using the terminal or are you clicking something? uh the terminal uh the, the the docker desktop um i just like uh just started with by clicking the 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 icon the the, the docker icon then uh yeah. but when you run your sandbox where are you running your sandbox from uh from my vs code terminal from if you yeah it should be able to pick it up oh okay okay yeah it should be able to pick it up yeah okay thank you all right, is everything clear on your end, Titus, now? Oh, yeah, can yeah, everything. I, can I recommend yeah. just Titus also just to connect with Musa just uh, after this, just for, or like, I don't know, the tutorials may be there, but just make sure that to get hold of Musa and then present your screen and you can, like, you know, if something doesn't work, just make it work. Okay, uh, we'll do that. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Titus. Um, okay, given that there's no hand up, Matilda, Matilda, are you there? If you can hear me, okay, just unmute and share with us your progress, any blockers, any help you might need from the team here. Um, hello, hello, Mary. Good morning, guys. Good morning. So, um, as 
for my progress, I have been facing a lot of blockers along along the way. So yesterday I was trying to just connect Sandbox to to the D app. I managed to run my Sandbox on my VS Code using the Git Bash, but then I wasn't able to connect my Sandbox to the D app for me to to see my transactions and my assets on that other side. So I wasn't able to submit the screenshots of that as well. So I'm still trying to find my way around that. Also, I was having um, challenges um, working on the front, front end and the back end. So I was just trying to watch some videos, some YouTube videos and read some materials around and ask in, on Slack. I haven't made um, much progress so far. I'm still lagging a bit behind. But I'm hoping that I will get help today. Um, I'm purposing to reach out to the tutors for help today. Yeah, thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you, Matilda. And is there any particular that you can get from... Um, I mean, did you manage... I'm just asking this out of curiosity. Did you manage to attend yesterday's um, guest speaker talk? Yes, yes, I did. I was there. Okay. Any particular key takeaway from that session? Like very specific one? Um, I think um, my key takeaway um, on that was about um, prioritizing my time and, you know, uh, prioritizing the tasks that I need to work on urgently when she was talking about um you know finding the balance and also um managing time properly with all the work yeah that's that's what i got out from it great thank you so much Jonas. i can see your hand up do you want to unmute and share with us your progress and any particular blockers hello hello uh so i uh, progress i have uh, tried to um, interact with the Python SDK and try to send transaction and create an asset. Uh, I'm not trying to do receiving and transferring an asset. So my uh, blockers actually, I am not getting uh, it quite uh, right because I was trying to see the uh, demo uh, application, the, the demo from the GitHub you are ready from the uh, documentation, the auction uh, tab. So it has functions that uh, that does the uh, the backend, the the smart contract. So what what are we doing by like, developing a backend with the Django or uh, other backend technology? So what are we doing? On the auction tab, there is only a uh, smart contract using PyT. So what are we doing on the backend side? I'm not getting the uh, right image. All right. Um, a tutor, any tutor to assist? Yababel, perhaps? I think I, I was just, my background was a bit noisy, so I couldn't hear uh, easily. But I understand that you, you are asking about what is what what is the image, like the kind of conceptual uh, process in the back end, you mean? Or did I get your question right? Yeah, I, uh, I can do the, the creating, transferring uh, uh, assets or sending transactions. But the back end that we are supposed to do using Django or Flask. So, what are we doing on that part? Okay, so the the part about the backend is really to you could do it everything in the front end, right? Because already a node, if you are using the SDK for let's say if you are your front end is React or some JavaScript, you could actually do it from that. Clearly, that you could use uh, some of the SDK, JavaScript SDK. And then you will be able to call and you don't need much. But that means the code will be much more as you as you make it more complex. The kind of queries starts becoming you know one repo 
that has everything. So the part of, and also more than that, it's the, the kind of the logic separation between what is really handling the UI UI X, which is what we call at this point front end that basically just says like, okay, you know, I, I'm going to show this field. I'm going to show this drop down menu. I'm going to show this button. And then I'm going to, of course, someone is going to click that. And then what does it do? Of course, it can implement a front end logic uh, right, that everything can be in the front end or that can be called actually that can call an API, right? So there will be the, I think the tutorial today will be also from the back end, and they will just explain this in a much more detail. So that's what you are trying to do to bring, to take out most of these complexities to the back end, such that in Flask, for example, you will generate one endpoint, one API endpoint that will make it easier. For example, yeah, like if it is about transfer, uh, if there is an opt-in transfer this NFT to that person, you know, you would basically write a, a bit of code up in Python that does all the, all the using the Python SDK. And then you will only expose basically, you know, whatever the input field required plus just that button, right? So then you will do it. So the backend will implement that one. So it's, I mean, it's just basically really to reduce coding in the front end and to really split much of the logic that can be done just, you know, separately in another microsystem or even just in the server that to, to do it there. You know? So it's kind of, it's splitting the logic. Does that make sense? Okay. So if I'm getting it right, so we handle the interacting with the, the uh, Algorand SDK on the back end. So yeah. we, and we prepare an API, can it be an HTTP or I don't know, like, to yep. the front end, so the front end just calls that API. Exactly. So the, when we say backend, it really means that one. Just uh, exposing different KPIs that basically wraps around some other APIs, right? So the Algorand API basically is somehow wrapped by the Algorand SDK, and then on top of that, you build your logic and you call it a backend for you. Okay. Yeah. I understood. Thank you. Is that very clear on your end, Jonas? Yeah, yeah, very clear. Okay, and you're ready to go for today? Yeah, sure. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, we still have around 15 yeah, minutes. Maybe, next. maybe I just I just want, okay, that's why it's gone, but I just want to ask who who is following up? Like, I mean, I just want to find out great people are doing, you know, trying and it's really I'm happy to hear that. But I want to also know, who is not trying, who hasn't got it? Like who would just be like to just raise hand, but not say anything about it even. You know, just that maybe you can ask uh, Mary as well at the end. But Tasfaya was also raising his hand, so we can. Okay, so uh, I think we'll let Tasfaya go. Then the few minutes that will be left after Tasfaya, we'll try and address, uh, uh, for, for the for people who don't even know what to ask but they're confused they're in the mix-up of everything you, you're happy we're happy to kind of you just raise your hand we might even follow up after 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 the daily standard to kind of try to figure out where the problem is so Tesfaye? hello Tesfaye, you're quite low i don't know if it's the volume or it is actually your voice that you need to increase a bit. What about now? Mm, better. Okay. Um, so, like I mentioned on yesterday's standard, my PC stopped working yesterday. So I needed to get a new PC, at least temporarily. So, uh, I finally found the PC that I can use for this challenge. And, uh, Is fine. Yeah. I think we lost you. Can you hear me? Yes. Is that is that a Web three lecture happening in the background? Not on mine. Okay. Uh, so uh, I got a new P. I, I got a temporary PC and uh, I installed everything and. Uh, uh, 
uh, starting of the sandbox really took time, especially uh, changing between uh, different the nets, like uh, uh, um, sandbox app dev, dev testnet and uh, release. Changing between those uh, three nets um, really uh, took uh, much of my time, but uh, I try to look at uh, most of them and. Uh, 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 look at uh, the uh, data flow. Uh, I might not be able to connect to the local on the uh, devnet, but uh, I uh, connected it to the testnet and uh, look at it. Just look at it how it does. Um, so uh, I think today is uh, a really important day for me. I have to uh, test and uh, apply some stuff on the back end, connecting it to the um, sandbox and uh, create generating uh, uh, accounts and, and so on on the back end at least at least for today so that I will get uh, a really good uh, image of what I, I can do uh, I can uh, continue doing and uh, also uh, what I what kind of uh, design I can uh, do on the front end so yeah the, today is an important day for me and uh, we will see what, what will happen uh, today tomorrow. Sorry, I still on mute. Thank you, Tesfai, for that. Uh, and you quite sound confident about today, so I won't ask that. So, um, as Yebebo was saying, it is possible that there's some of us who are really struggling even knowing where the starting point is or not even sure of what to ask because they don't even understand where the problem is or the confusion is. Just feel free to raise your hand and we'll kind of, we'll be happy to kind of figure out together where the problem is to ensure that, because at the end of the day, if you're not able to, uh, to get your work done, then that does not help at all. So in the next few minutes that are left, just few, even if you don't say anything, you just raise your hand. We can we'll be happily uh, we'll be happy to follow up with you later on. Uh, but in the meantime, as people are thinking about it, it would be nice to hear from from Baruch. Baruch, are you able to hear me? Okay. Uh, hello, Mary. Hi. Hi, uh, I, I can hear you. And uh, so to, to say a little bit about my progress. Uh, yesterday, I tried to uh, complete everything which is required for the, the entry and submission. And I, I did manage to submit. Um, but still, the problem is on the, on the implementation. As, uh, um, it is somehow complicated, as most of my uh, friends uh, are saying so, already. Uh, Peru, so, can you be a little bit more specific? What is complicated? What is not going right? Because at the moment, we really want to get practical with this so that you get practical assistance. Yeah, uh, so we, we, uh, we have to deal with some kind of back end and then front end, and then we have to also uh, link up the 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 algorithm the app uh, and implementation uh, uh, in the back in the back end so uh, first of all I, I I try to come up with some kind of uh, backing and front end uh, for for the project so uh, I, I took too much time on understanding how how uh, I should uh, implement the backing and then front end uh, so that that takes takes too much time for me and now I am on my way to uh, uh, combine everything and uh, go to the uh, algorithm implementation yeah so so are you struggling with anything at the moment that you might need assistance for or you just need enough time to get you know what to do but you just need time yeah I would love to have some kind of help on uh, on the back end, especially on the back end. So uh, that, that's actually the, 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 the business logic where everything is going to be managed. So um, yeah, so it's somehow not clear. So uh, I would love to get some kind of hint on 
on on on the back end implementation okay so do you need more like do you need somebody to follow up with you or is it something you can raise here in terms of what you need yeah actually i i, I have to, I, I have tried to communicate with martin in, in, this, in, in the morning before this uh, session and we are okay. uh, yeah we are on our way to uh, to make some kind of progress but uh, uh, so we we, we uh, cut our uh, session due to uh, the stand up and uh, hopefully we will continue and I hope I will get uh, uh, some way in to start everything yeah perfect thank you for uh, for mentioning that sorry if I was a little bit pushing hard for it it's just that it's not we are not trying to understand only what you're up to and as I said we're trying to understand what, what exactly are you doing uh, if, if you're facing any challenges, if there's any particular thing you're doing to um, to overcome that obstacle, specific obstacle, so it's it's great that you um, you're in contact with Martin, who's going to be assistive on that aspect. So probably okay. we can have one more, then we'll invite any comments from uh, from the tutors and uh, and from the management team as well. Um, so let's hear maybe from Enoch as the last one to close up for today. Yeah, uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. So uh, I, I was able to submit my uh, interim time, but uh, I had one question from what Yavval was saying to uh, Aaron. He mentioned that uh, opting in as a transaction the way I was picturing it was when a trainee logs in, they would have some media button that would, uh, when pressed, that would trigger a request to the backend to have them in some list of trainees that want a trans their uh, certificate. And then uh, if approved by the staff member, that the owner, the certificate would be minted and the ownership of that certificate will be transferred to to the trainee. So I, I I'm, I'm not clear on uh, how just opting in is okay. I'll look I'll look into the link. How yeah, opting it, in it's basically in, you know, so it's just basically you can refer that you can okay. like unlike algos which are just uh, currency which you don't need uh, opting. This one, it requires that you actually allow um, to receive. So if you are you know, accepting a standard assets in Algorand, you must actually opt in so that, because it, 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 it does something to your account that it increases your minimum algos that you need in the next round of trade. So th there is, so that means you must, somebody cannot transfer for you an asset without your knowledge and okay. to do that means you have to opt in okay. and, and you can also opt out that means you can delete that that thing but just this opt-in and opt-out are this the ability for you whether you are willing to accept that and then we have to basically show you of course in the front end what are the the ids uh, that are available for you to opt in and then you take that one and you make a transaction and this opt-in transaction is basically a zero value transaction. Oh, okay. Okay. So it doesn't cost anything. No, it doesn't. Okay. It just increases something on your minimum required minimum algos in our next kind of uh, transactions. So it's basically every time you opt into something, it increases um, the minimum assets you may have or your minimum algos you, you, you would require to have. Mm. Okay. Is that very clear, Enoch, now? Yeah, yeah. I, I still need to look into the link, but yeah, it is clear. Awesome, thank you so much. Anyway, in the next uh, couple of minutes, uh, probably can hear any, any final comments from the tutors. Whoever has any comments I mean, to make. I, I, wanna, I wanna just say that it's really great and very, I'm impressed by how people 
grasp a completely new idea. I think machine learning, data engineering, you probably have heard it. It's very, this is a new diff idea for most people. And, you know, jumping in, being unfamiliar and kind of testing your new ground and still trying to do something, that really is uh, the whole point. And I'm happy for those who are kind of giving it a try and installing, installing whatever is necessary, borrowing, the, you know, uh, another laptop. These are just the kind of commitment one needs to actually do something. And I can guarantee you the it's not just Web3 that you're developing. As you can see, it's just the entire thing. It, it tests your setup infrastructure. It say, tests your kind of computer basic knowledge, tests your kind of like shell scripts. It really does whatever is like, if you were even to be um, a data engineer, this would really help you in that kind of perception. It expands your horizon. So when the horizon expands, it doesn't just expand for Web3, it expands for everything. So hopefully you will see at the end of you know, this challenge that somehow your understanding of backend, frontend, your understanding of infrastructures, your understanding of APIs, which are all necessary for whether call it ML engineering, data engineering, and web engineering, that's really um, essential. So keep up, but if you haven't been kind of, if you were laying down, you were not doing uh, because you were confused, I would really advise just, you know, just step up, really do it. Don't miss this week, you know, get the best out of it. I think that's the final thing I want to say. Thank you, Ababel. And I think that's loud and clear. Now that we've come, we've come to the end of our stand-up session. So thank you very much. And thank you for all your contribution. Let's meet up in the next sessions. Bye guys.